make no mistake, your capacity to provide both high caliber medical service and outstanding curriculum that focuses on rural and small town practices could not come at a more opportune time as our six rural communities have approximately 70 to 80 percent fewer physicians and surgeons and 20 to 30 percent fewer pediatricians compared to the national average. And it is precisely the training that you are undertaking that can ultimately lead to more physicians opting to stay in medically underserved areas. Indeed, the American Medical Association has found that physicians traditionally practice within 100 miles of where they are trained. As for my part, in an effort to address the challenge of medical shortages, excuse me, challenge of medical shortages in the state, I have championed an effort during the health care debate to permit hospitals to receive payments for the time resident physicians train in ambulatory sites such as physician offices, nursing homes, and community health centers. Rest assured, I will remain vigilant in ensuring that this is properly implemented. And just this past April, I joined with over 30 of my Senate colleagues in sending a letter to the Appropriations Committee requesting $330 million for Title VII health professions training programs, which provide scholarships and loan repayments to students who agree to work in medically underserved areas. You can bet I will be battling for these resources when the Senate considers this appropriations measure later this fall. Persistently striving to break down barriers to train in rural settings is an absolute imperative. Franklin Memorial understands these challenges firsthand, and this exciting venture is proof positive that together we can build an even better medical future for Maine's rural areas and inspire a new generation of students here in Franklin County and throughout Maine to pursue medicine in their very own backyard. Thank you again for the trails you are blazing and the standards you are continuing to set in Maine's vital rural access areas. Sincerely, Olympia J. Snow, United States Senator. And I guess then we can say the doctor is in. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Diane. I'd like now to introduce uh, to you someone who's no longer a stranger to us, who's been with us uh, well over a year and a half. And uh, that is Becky Ryder, Rebecca Ryder, President of Franklin Community Health Network. Becky. Thank you, Terry. Well, I have the, uh, the pleasure of actually reading the proclamation uh, that will, I guess, it is anoint this house uh, for the medical students. But before I do that, I would like to do a couple of things. First, uh, we received today a letter from uh, uh, Representative Mike Michaud, and I'd like to read that, and we certainly appreciate him uh, remembering us. The letter is addressed to me, dear Rebecca. I am pleased to send my congratulations at today's dedication of the Medical School Partnership Residence at Franklin Memorial Hospital. With a mission to provide high quality health care, you tirelessly work to transform the health care system through patient centered care. Today's celebration is just the latest example of that effort. Franklin County is known as Maine's healthiest community, and much of that credit goes to the partners of Franklin Community Health Network. You are always on the forefront of technology and are always finding innovative ways to better serve the health care needs of residents of Franklin County. Keep up the great work. Please accept my congratulations and my best wishes for an enjoyable celebration. With warmest regards, uh, Representative Michael Michoud, and he scratches Mike across it. So uh, we are very pleased that uh, uh, the representative remembered us today. The second thing I wanted to do, and my staff will groan, but don't groan. Uh, I, I need to tell a story, which I am known to do. Right, Karen? And this story goes back two years this month. I had to look back in my email box, uh, my private email box, uh, to find the date. But on October 28th, two years ago, I received an email uh, from the, the chairperson of the board of directors. Uh, Doug is here. Uh, and he offered me a job. 
and said, uh, we are excited and we want you to come to Franklin. Do you remember that email, Doug? Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and so I know the date. It was October 28th and it was a Thursday. Uh, now I had heard from the uh, recruiter a couple of days before, so I knew that a, the uh, communication was coming. But uh, it's been two years. The following week, I believe it was the following Tuesday, so we'll have to count the days. That may have been close to November 1st. Now here, I am in South Texas, in my office, and who contacts me? This is a quiz. <laughs> Dr. David Dixon. The announcement's been made. And Dr. Dixon says, I'm sorry, I can't wait until you get here. I have a question. <laughs> I've got to know whether you're going to support this or not. And he proceeded to tell me about this partnership opportunity. Now, talk about a setup. I'm thinking probably the board of directors has told him no. And it is often the case with physicians, and we have several, it's like, okay, how can I get around this no? <laughs> then maybe I'll just call the new boss, and if she says yes, you know? And so we had a very good discussion, and, and seriously, the passion uh, that Dave shared about this initiative, the commitment to this community, the opportunity we have to really look at uh, the future of, of our physician supply in Franklin County and so forth really came through loud and strong in that conversation. And, and obviously, with what uh, Dave shared with me, it was double thumbs up. Not knowing any of the details, not knowing if Maine Medical Center Tufts uh, program wanted our relationship, I assume they did. Uh, all of the details were yet to come. And obviously, I joined the organization. Within a couple of months, medical staff supported this initiative along with the, the finance committee and the board. So the, the rest is history, as they say. And now we're, we're preparing. Uh, the students have been with us uh, for a few days here and there. And now we're preparing for uh, two students to join us on, on, uh, on their rotation, which will be... Uh, uh, permanent with us for a while. So we're very much looking forward to that. So on to the proclamation, and I'm asking for some help with this, because we've got a few moving parts, if you will. We've got the plaque and all of that. So Dave, do you want to come up and help Jill? You don't want this, please. You cannot let it blow over. <laughs> okay, you're told, over here, Dave. Well, let's get it. Jill, you... Not yet. No, 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 no. Only as instructed. Stay, stay. As instructed. Stay over here. No, not yet. Not yet. So Jerry did the artwork on this. Let's just say, no, I'm joking. All right. Uh, I will ask you to listen as I read the proclamation. Whereas Dr. David Dixon is a visionary physician, esteemed colleague, active community member, and friend, and whereas after finishing his surgical residency at Maine Medical Center, Dr. Dixon came to this community to work as a general surgeon, caring for thousands of patients, over a span of nearly 40 years. And whereas, from the start, Dr. Dixon had a vision of a health care that would serve the community, combining the best clinical medicine with the best preventive medicine in a network that would make health care available to all. And whereas, originally that vision took the form of rural health associates, one of the nation's first HMOs that employed physicians and physicians' assistants who provided primary care to its members, and whereas those early RHA days and influences are still felt 
at community uh, at Franklin Community Health Network today, including the existence of rural.